My name is Yo Jackson, and I'm an associate professor in the Clinical Child Psychology Program. We recently received uh, an award, an, uh, what's called an R01 grant, from the National Institutes of Health, uh, the subdivision of the National Institutes of Mental Health, uh, for $1.7 million over the course of the next five years um, to do a project uh, that seeks to test the mechanisms of resilience for children who are exposed to trauma. Our particular focus in this project is, is child maltreatment. And that broadly defined includes all of the different types of experiences related to what may, most people call child abuse. So physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, psychological abuse, a range of experiences that children can have in their family environment. Children, ultimately, we define as being resilient, are those who are meeting developmental milestones as expected compared to other children who haven't had those traumas. So in order to be resilient, it's important to remember that you have to have had a test. There needs to be a significant trauma that we can document. And, and usually what we're talking about are multiple traumas. In our clinic, I would have these experiences with children who uh, had suffered significant traumas. So for example, uh, growing up uh, in a house where there's a lot of drug use uh, or parents who, who had addiction problems. And we would see the siblings oftentimes, family groups oftentimes in therapy. And it was fascinating to see that although we would expect all the children to suffer uh, and struggle with the, the challenges that that stress provides, occasionally there would be a sibling who seemed to be doing fine. We would find that there would be a child in the family who had friends and was doing fine in school and seemed to be developing socially appropriately and was physically healthy, all of those things that would be unexpected given what had happened to you. So the struggles and the clinical problems and symptoms kids were having were not surprising. We would expect that to happen. And it started a, a sort of a stream of questions in my head about why does that happen? Is it uh, something we can actually measure? Is it a pattern we could actually document? And could we investigate with that child a little bit further about what he or she has that's really working for them? What we're gonna be able to do is assess kids really from top to bottom uh, from a psychological standpoint. So we're going to be assessing their family life, their social life, their academic life, uh, looking at how they are emotionally functioning. And we have a fairly innovative way of doing this. We're going to be using a, a computerized system in order to get the information from the children. What we hope ultimately is that we're able to follow uh, 270 children uh, in this project. What we hope to be able to do is take that process and then map it on to the next generation of children and say, okay, well, well, now we understand how the process works, what could we do therapeutically to build that in for children who've been exposed to a variety of different kinds of trauma? We really do see this on uh, an individual level, so for therapists uh, and, and for the field, but then also broader, hopefully, to inform policy about where we put our limited resources uh, in, in our efforts to try to improve the lives and welfare of these children.